I haven't done a video about Antarctica in a while because I've been trying to figure out what all of this means. All of these different things that we found, they're hiding um, things they haven't been able to hide, things that you can only see with perspective, all points to this idea that there was, at one time, a civilization down here. There may very well still be. Maybe living under the ice, maybe living underground, who knows. But there's a mixture down here of things that we see that are clearly hand of man, modern man, and things that look like maybe hand of ancient man. Now, recently, I've found something that has been uh, perplexing me for a while, but I think it gives us another insight. It's this idea of these cables that I had found, and I have them marked out here in red, how they always went directly east-west or directly north-south, almost every single one of them. And they would appear in some areas and then disappear in other areas, and it was really hard to figure out what they might be. We don't find them in places that are like America, for example, or Europe. I looked all over, and you can't find these. But looking over here, just off what they call the Oats Coast, I found a series of them that started to show a pattern. I found these three distinct cable sections, and of course I'll link all this. And what it showed is that these cable sections, these east-west running cable sections, are 15 kilometers apart, exactly. Now, I've never seen any modern mapping system or military mapping system that blocks things out in 15 score, 15 kilometer by 15 kilometer um, units. It's a very odd, uh, I guess, determinate size. It just doesn't seem to make any sense. And they are right on the money at 15 kilometers. And, like, for example, this is 15, this is 15. I couldn't find any evidence, but up here, there's one at 45. So, clearly, at some point in here, underneath all of the, the hiding, there's two more. Now, I did some searching, and I did some research on this 15-kilometer uh, um, paradigm. If we assume that the east-west are 15 kilometer and the north-south are 15 kilometer, it would give you a square, 15 by 15, which would of course be 225 square kilometers. So I looked up what is the significance of 225 square kilometers. Well, I found something. It's in this book, Constructing Frames of Reference, an analytical method for archaeology. And I will link this, and you can read it for yourself. I know the, the writing is very small. But it talks about these two terms called a forad, F-O-R-A-D, and a cohab. Now, the forad, F-O-R-A-D, stands for an area that an ancient hunter-gatherer society might operate in regularly to find food. Basically, I guess what they're saying is that... Um, 15 kilometers each direction would represent the maximum distance of ancient peoples. And I just want to show you that here real quick, where they mention this. Cohab is the actual size of the, the, group, size of the group of people. And it says here, Table 7.13 records the, meaning, the, the mean foraging radius for male and female work parties in very different environmental settings because the terms... Of the group size model being constructed require that I produce a single value from the combined record of male and female foraging activities. Um, I use the mean of the female 6 kilometers, 6.66 .6 kilometers, and male 9.9 .9 kilometers foraging radiuses. The combined mean value of 8.28 kilometers applies to the radius of the circle encompass, encompassing 215.38 square kilometers or 2.15 100 square kilometer units. 
Since this figure is itself an approximation, I have chosen to accept as the standard a circle forming the boundary of a 2.25 100 square kilometer units, or 225 square kilometers. So this very well might be what they're doing. They found something down there. They found evidence of ancient man, and they're going block by block by block by block to get as much information as they can. And this is, and like I said, you can read about this for yourself. Um, a cohab is a measure of a group of people. It represents 20.47 persons. Um, kind of an odd measure, but um, serves as the standard in terms. And then the forad is, of course, um, the size that I just mentioned. So, anyway, I know it's not horribly, horribly exciting news, but I'm going to continue to look into this. Um, and once again this very well might be the issue of what they're hiding. Because I am sure they would want, and by they I mean other scientists and the world, would want there to be a complete lifting of the ban on travel down here. And I think they're afraid that some of these sites might get contaminated and they can't do their work. If they do, people coming down here trying to get stuff to put on eBay or treasure hunters or whatever else. Now, I mean, you can debate the, you know, philosophical righteousness, I guess, for lack of a better term, of barring people and banning people from travel to certain areas. And I can, I guess I can see both sides of the argument, but it does explain a lot. It really, really does. And it's not, uh, Super, like I said, super exciting, but it does piece together the puzzle. And I'll show you this real quick. I found, uh, this is the first cable here. And cable is just a term. Um, this is just a line they're using to delineate this. And I measured up to the next one I found here. And it was right on, literally right on 15 kilometers. To this one. And I know the guy said 15 kilometers circle, but I think they have to deal with what they're dealing with. Down here, they have to block this off. They can't block it, of course, off in circles. That would be ridiculous. And then I kept looking as I went farther south, and there wasn't enough high res. But then it started to clear up a little bit, and then lo and behold, this one showed up. Now, it's weird, though. Um, some of these cables actually... Give me one second. This is kind of interesting. You have to uh, click into the historical. You see how this just appeared when I clicked in the historical part of this? If I unclick that, it goes away. So what it tells me is that they've scrubbed it. Modern imagery, the most recent up-to-date imagery, will show, show this as having been scrubbed. But as I click the, you know, the little box up here, I guess I should show it to you, up here at the top, right next to where you can turn the lights down and make it like at sunset, there's a little clock, and you can go show historical data. Now I just turn that off, and then it disappears. And there it is, with historical data on. But, like I said, one of the strange things is, is that these cables, especially the longer ones, actually have some curvature. Because the line that I'm drawing, the red one, is perfectly straight. But if I draw them, trying to run parallel, as you can see, my line is straight and that line crosses it. It crosses it once there, and then it crosses back over as I move down the line here. So it isn't straight. So whatever it is, it's not, um, not computer-generated. 
because a computer generated image would draw a straight line just like the Google program here is drawing a straight line. And it's over a curved surface. So whichever, and I guess I should have shown you this to begin with, when I started up here, my line is the red one and this is the actual one. And I started running parallel. Okay, on a certain course. I think it was 270.3. And as you can see, I was off a little bit, but I can't make my line curve with the ruler function. As we move down here, and I should have zoomed out a little bit farther so we can do this quicker. I'll show you this to you again. All of a sudden that line deviates off of its course and it crosses over mine to where now it's north of mine. And then, after a certain distance, it crosses back over again. So whatever it is down there, it's real. This isn't some hiccup of Google Maps. Or Google Earth Pro, I should say, pardon me. And so, like I said, in this region, that's the, uh, the big one, but I found three more down here. And it's all along this mountain range. So somebody is doing some kind of mapping work, some kind of surveying work. They've found something, and they're trying to figure it out. And my guess, my best guess, is that it's underground. And they're using some kind of a technique above ground so that they can get an image from space. So that they can put it in relation to everything else and see what they're looking at. So anyway, I will leave it there. I just wanted to share this with you guys. Um, thank you so much for your support. Like, share, subscribe. We'll see you next time.